Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Fulani. My guest this morning is uh, Ismail Omipido. Mr. Omipido is the, um, is the journalist, first of all, and he's the immediate past uh, chief press secretary uh, to the governor of, uh, former governor of Oshun State. And um, thank you very much. You're not the first come on this program. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. Indeed. Good morning. Indeed. Good morning. Well, um, as you know, you, ha you, 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 you have a new administration, even though I have heard your principal, or maybe heard is not the right word, I have read of your principal insisting on that he's um, quite enthusiastic of governing you know, Ocean State, again, uh, no doubt referring to court processes yeah. that are in the works. Uh, so f first of all, to just sort of sort that out, um, the new gov a new governor has been sworn in. Um, it's a done deal, is what most people would think. It's a done deal. That, that, that is over and done with. And so um, uh, for your principal to be saying at this time that um, he's still optimistic of you know, regaining uh, his office, uh, explain that. Thank you very much. Um, for us, we have uh, implicit confidence in the judiciary uh, to do a thorough job as far as um, the petition before them is concerned. And we are very, very hopeful that by and the, the grace of God... To be, to, for, for anybody who is hearing of this for the first time, the petition is to the effect that um, we did not lose. Yeah, we, like I said, we only lost the vote count. We never lost the election. Um, you recall that on the 17th of July, when the result of the election was announced, mm. I had the privilege of appearing on a, a TV program that same evening. And I said to our viewers then that even though we're still studying the results of the election, but as a journalist, who also had members of my team out there who monitored the election. If I cannot speak on any area as far as the conduct of the election is concerned, that could speak authoritatively on Eden North and South. Okay. What happened was that as of July 16th on the day of the election, by 7 p.m., virtually all the media houses who were deployed to the state covering the election were reporting that voting had ended 7 p.m. But as at 10.30 p.m., voting was still on in Eden North and South. And I went further to state that I have it on the good authority that by 2.30 p.m., those who were voting by 10.30 p.m. were not on the queue in line with INEC guideline and the, uh, in line with INEC guideline for the election. And at the end of the day, we lost that vote count by 28,000 across the state. And that difference came only from a day. I see. So that is that. Now, but when we now finished studying the result of the election, we realized that they were over voting in 749 polling units. No less. Yeah, 749 out of the over 3,000 polling units in the state. And by the time we applied for the certified true copy of the BIVAS report, don't forget that according to the Electoral Act and INE guideline, accreditation can only be done by beavers. Now, by the time we applied for the certified true copy of the beavers report, we, we, we were able to establish some of our fears. That in the 749 polling units that we are challenging, the number of votes declared were far above the number of those that were accredited. And so in simple language, they were about voting in 749 polling units. That is part of the things we are challenging. Again, okay. we are also challenging its eligibility to even run in the first instance. Don't that is the eligibility of the incumbent governor, the incumbent governor. Uh, Adeleke. Yeah, don't forget that in 2018, after the 2018 election, it was arraigned for, I think, forgery or two. The proceeding was on. He applied for bail under medical grounds, and the bill was granted him, and he left the country. And nobody saw him again until he returned some few months to the election to contest. That also, it's another, you know, so, 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 so on those two grounds, okay. on those two grounds, we are confident that by the grace of God. And especially 
um, uh, the, uh, on the uh, the uh, position that uh, there was overvoting in 249. 749, uh, seven, seven, 749 polling units. Polling units. Yeah. Um, uh, no doubt, if you're making a petition to the court, they're going to want to see um, e evidence. Yeah, we, so we, you we, would have, we, we have properly done, filed. We, we have done all that. The tribunal is on. Uh, I think as at the last uh, uh, sitting, uh, there was contention as to because we applied uh, for his certificates and all the papers he filed to contest for the 2018 election. We applied that they be brought to court. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they played some game. We got subpoena. Uh, the tribunal granted the subpoena, compelling INEC to come with the, uh, 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 those documents. But on the day they appeared, uh, the resident electoral commissioner did not uh, appear. He sent a, a representative, and there was this back and forth whether over who should actually produce it. And he told the court that um, uh, the INEC office in Oshubu was no longer in possession of those materials. And so our lawyers now argued for that, that since he didn't say they can't find it, he said they are no longer in Oshubu or that they are in Abuja, he should go and fetch it. So as at the last ruling, the tribunal ruled that they must produce uh, those documents in okay. court. So, the, so tomorrow uh, is, the, is the next date of the sitting. So we'll wait to see uh, uh, how, it how it goes from there. How it goes from there. So we are very, very confident that by the grace of God, we'll reclaim our mandate back. Hmm. Um, seeing, well, seeing as we've come this far, a new government has been sworn in, actions, you know, executive actions have begun to be taken. Uh, I, I was wondering, uh, because you being close to your principal, um, I was wondering, doesn't it feel that... Um, we could just move on from here. There are other fish to fry. And um, this, this, is a, this has been done, it has been done. Uh, is that anything that ever crossed your you know, principal's mind? Or never? He's known from day one, following the election, that he's not happy with this and he's going to fight it to the end. Well, if you know the antecedent of my principal very well, you will know that uh, it's one man that has proven beyond all reasonable doubt that you can still be very, very decent and still be in politics. For instance, I break it down for you. In the history of electioneering in Nigeria, the last election in Oshun is the first election where you will find a sitting governor going for a re-election and did everything possible to refuse to heat up the polity unnecessarily. You did not see us apply any do or die tactics. Okay. Ordinarily, that's where the, 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 the incumbent will engage in anything and everything to ensure that he remains in power at all costs. We never do any, we, we never did any of that because we believe very strongly that we have done enough to end the trust of the people. And if you look at the result of the election, in spite of all that happened, in 2018, for instance, he scored barely a little above 250,000 votes. But in 2022, he garnered uh, about 375,000. That's over 50% increase in what he got earlier. So that, for me, is a significant confirmation that indeed the people of the state still loves him. Okay. So, and as you said, uh, your, your governor, uh, the former governor, um, was a man who clearly believed in uh, um, being a gentleman in politics. That's what you seem to be saying. Yeah, gentleman uh, in police. Uh, unfortunately, in a, a lot of people took advantage of that. Uh, <laughs> you know, that gentlemanly uh, disposition. <laughs> that gentlemanly disposition of my principal. Okay. Um, well, I, I just wanted to sort of get the, you know, uh, up on that. And we just learned that tomorrow is the next tribunal date when we shall hear uh, according to, you know, uh, what you've just told us. Um, meanwhile, uh, it's... It, You've been at, um, your principal has been at uh, great pains to explain that he was not leaving the state uh, broke. He was leaving the state, in fact, with uh, 14 billion naira, uh, for example, uh, as things are beginning to happen. Um, did you feel there was a need for that to be said? I mean, whatever is in the banks, the new administration will, will see, will know, and... Um, 
or you were just concerned with uh, credit being given where it is due? Not necessarily for credit to be given where it is due. You know, in this climb, they play politics with anything and everything. And usually, we have tried as much as possible to entrench good governance in the state. Okay. This was a state, at the time we took over, nobody gave us a chance. This was a state that struggled to pay salary before we came on board. This was a state where, on daily basis, you hear every negative things about the state. We have been able to reverse all that. And so we felt very strongly that there was a need to give what looked like a stewardship account of what it, we did in four years before people begin to say, ah, uh, he didn't do anything, he didn't do that. So those who reported that angle of the story, this was, that was just one aspect of the farewell uh, statement from my principal. So it was a farewell statement which was uh, released on the 26th of November, signaling the end of the first term of my principal. Even if there was no change of government, we will still have gone ahead to give that stewardship account because there is a need for people to know where we started from because we inherited over 200 billion debts as of 2018. And we ran the state effectively, efficiently for four years without borrowing, without taking any bank loan. Beside that, we were also able to pay 97 billion from the debts that we inherited. Just imagine if we had 50 out of the 97 billion uh, debt repayment that we did to play around with. Imagine what we could have done. And that in spite of all this, we still left 14 billion in the coffers. Okay. So it's just part of our stewardship account. We build roads, roads that had been abandoned for close to 30, 40 years uh, at Daigbajo Road. Uh, Yakoyo Ribu Meji Road, um, uh, Oshogbo Kelebe Iragbuji Road, uh, Alepu Odo Network of Roads, and we also started the construction of uh, Oshogbo Iwo Road. Okay. In fact, that is very significant. Significant in the sense that when we set out to fix that road, we realized that if we fix our own part of the road, which is a little above 50 kilometers, and the Oyo State does not do their own part of the road, our effort will be a wasted one. Because what it then meant was that if you apply from Moshubu to Iwo, once you leave Iwo, the same uh, uh, problem we're trying to solve, uh, reduce our uh, hour of traveling, and ensure socioeconomic activities on that axis will be defeated. We reach out to His Excellency, uh, Engineer Sheri Makinde, and he graciously accepted that we could collaborate to fix that stretch mm -hmm. of the road, mm -hmm. no, uh, okay. uh, totaling about 91 kilometers. Well, it's interesting. All, all, this, all this was done, and yet the election went the way it went. You would have thought otherwise. But then you started by explaining that, as far as you're concerned, for 749 polling units, there was, a, you know, wuru wuru voting going on. Yeah. So long story short. Yeah. Okay, let's turn our attention now. Uh, thank you for that uh, background because we wanted to find out um, if we were really uh, moving on. And yes, we are moving on. A new governor has been sworn in. Governor Adeleke of the PDP is in place. And he has been taking some you know, first steps, shall we say. Um, maybe to, to look at that, you touched on some of those things. Um, this whole question of um, 12,000 workers sacked, being sacked, um, in, in this is one of the steps, uh, traditional rulers being, you know, removed, uh, so to speak. Uh, tell me about the 12,000 workers being sacked first. Well, um, again, I, I stated it long before now that um, the Oshun PDP has a, a history of lying. You know, in October, when I engage in a, a conversation on the radio program with uh, the spokesperson to the governor. Mm. 
when you mentioned that uh, we, we had engaged 12,000 workers. And I told him that I hope that you will, have the, you will have the courage to apologize to the members of the public. And indeed, the people of Oshun, by the time they found out that that figure does not exist. There were no so, 12,000 workers to, were, be, to be sacked? The, how many is the workforce that will now add 12,000 between July and November? You know, and even when they announced the sack, I responded immediately with a three-paragraph statement challenging them to publish the list of those 12,000 workers. That figure only exists in the imagination of the governor and his spokesperson. Because I don't know where they got that figure from. To stretch it further, the employment we are talking about will be a little above 2,000. And this was how we arrived at them. When we came in, we saw a lot of gap in the teaching sector. Mm -hmm. And um, the report of the reform that was submitted to us, which included the issue of uh, uh, going back, uh, you know, reviewing the single uniform, which was a major issue before we came in, issue of reclassification of schools, issue of uh, changing the names of schools that led some of the old students to even take the state government to court and even uh, severe their relationship with the state government. So in that report, it was recommended that we should employ 7,500 teachers to fill the gap. Now, when we look at it, we look at the wage bill, we look at what we had, we now arrive at the fact that we're going to engage 2,500. Unfortunately, COVID did not allow us to start the process when we wanted to start. But eventually, we started the process early this year, long before the election. It was JAM that helped us to conduct the exercise for uh, the would-be uh, teachers. And we announced early enough that we were going to do the recruitment in batches. And so we took the first set of 1,000. And we started this process before the election. So each time they say, were creating roadblocks or uh, uh, laying line mines for the incoming governor. The next question I ask is that, are you saying that when we started most of the processes we were going to, we knew what the outcome of the election would be, and so we were also planting line mines for ourselves? Because so we that, started... That, it doesn't make sense yeah, from that point of view. it doesn't make sense. We started before the election. So by the time we finished with the 1,000, the next stage was the 1,005. So of the... 2,000 that we employed, 1,005 would be teachers. And this process started long before the election. So I don't know where they got the figure of their 12,000. So, so that, that's what I was, what I was going to I, finish with. I don't know. With. And so I, where I, did I, I the figure of 12,000 It was the workers. spokesperson who issued the release, duly signed, mm. in October. Mm. And he also came on air because I, had, I engaged him on air in October. And I challenged him that... I hope he will have the courage because I knew he was lying. He couldn't be the, that, the facts couldn't line up the way. Yeah, that he had I been knew said. that I hope he will have the courage to apologize to the Nigerian public and even the people of Oshun if they end up discovering that the figure they are banding around is not correct. Okay. Uh, since then, uh, have you had any inkling that they're beginning to sort of um, uh, drive back a bit from where they were, or sometimes the what, people what, can what, double down? What, or? What, what I noticed was. Um, on the day of the inauguration, when I was analyzing the speech of um, uh, Mr. Governor, uh, he claimed that every action... That's Governor Adelike, that Yes. Is. He claimed that every action that was taken immediately after July 16 election... Yes. ...would be a nullity. Yes, yes. And I, I kept wondering where such powers would come from. Are you saying that Oyotola, who was elected for four years tenure, whose mandate runs up until Saturday, November 26th, have no right to take actions. I'm even stretching it further that if we will go by his claim, then it means that even his inauguration is a nullity because we're the ones who prepare, that's why it's inauguration. We're the ones who sign papers that prepare everything that were used for his inauguration. But 
again, he said he was going to issue executive order to back up those things he said. And by the next day, they read out about, uh, I think, six executive orders. One of them was uh, sacking of those workers. And because they were the ones who gave the figure of 12,000, mm -hmm. journalists who reported latch on on the figure. Now, the, the next day, they also said that uh, the traditional rulers that were installed, that uh, security operatives should take charge of their palaces. But by yesterday, when I listened to a spokesperson on radio again, he appears to be saying something different from what was said on uh, Monday. Because by yesterday, what they are now saying was that they have not sacked anybody and they have not asked any monarch to leave his uh, palace. And the next question I ask is, how do we now explain those executive orders? Now, they said they are setting up a panel to review those things. But you have already made up your mind on what to do. You are now setting up a panel. I wonder what the panel will be coming to do. At any rate, the monarchs they are talking about were enthroned a little above 20. A little above 20. In fact, one of them, the Akin, his uh, selection was concluded since last year. But because there were some legal orders, mm -hmm. my principal insisted that until all those legal orders were cleared, he was not going to ratify the appointment. And so it was when all those legal orders were cleared that he ratified the appointment one year after the selection. Now, if you now say that, okay, because I had the Honorable Bamilin Salam, a member of the House of Reps yesterday uh, from their side, saying that uh, there were some legal issues surrounding uh, the appointment of those monarchs. Assuming without conceding that there were legal issues surrounding the appointment of those monarchs, is the governor now assuming, is the governor now assuming the role of the judiciary? Why don't he allow, why don't he allow the judicial process to be concluded before taking any action? Well, if you admit that there were some legal encumbrances, why assume the role of the judiciary? Because when you now say that uh, security operatives will take over their palaces, you are invariably saying that they should leave their palaces. Okay, at this stage, let, let me just take this call that's coming from France, uh, Alaji Salam in Paris. Good morning. Good morning. Uncle Yari. Good morning, sir. Thank yeah. you for calling in. Thank you very much. Uh, we are enjoying your program, and uh, I have a question for your guest. Sure, sure. That all Nigerians would like to know. We, be, we assume that when a governor is leaving an office or a new county governor, there should be a prepared handing over that will indicate all what is left or the segment of uh, what they are going to be transferred. Please ask your guest for us. We want to hear from him. If his governor prepare any handing over for the new governor, that's one. Again, he, he, there are lots of uh, information that they passed out. We are expecting you, especially the, uh, your program, to call the spokesperson for the new governor also to explain first. Because we have been told the, the start of governor, we let her have that somebody cannot start all the, I mean, start the workers before instituting a committee to review. So it is quite clear, it's logical, that it is the committee that the new governor uh, mentioned in his uh, special order. So you should tell us the truth. And all the problems the, the, the presentation of the former governor was talking about happens to be from the previous governor, Arabe Shala, the same APC. That's his number. It's not from Adeleke. All right. All so right. that's the point I want him to clear for us. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alaji Salam, calling in from uh, Paris in France. Uh, was was a handover document uh, indeed prepared? They were, was it used? They were indeed prepared. Um, this is a letter dated 23rd of um, November. Invitation to Transition Committee. We invited them formally so that we could look at the records we prepared. Now, apparently because of what they had planned to do, I say so because... Uh, about two days on the date we were to meet, uh, a day before then, I had an engagement with the acting PDP, Ketika chairman of the PDP on the TV, where he was alluding to the fact that um, we were not carrying them along. And I said, no, it is not correct. 
that I am aware that the chief of staff to my principal is in touch with the people in your camp and that they were supposed to meet about a day or so after the day we were, we were talking. But later, we got a message from them that we should hand over to the most senior civil servant in the state. And that was what led us into writing this letter on dated November 27th. Uh, if you permit me, I'll read. Exactly. Presentation yes. of handover report. I bring you warm greetings from the government and the good people of Oshun. Further to my correspondent dated November 23rd, 2022, and reference SSG blah, 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 I write to inform you that the Government Transition Committee, consulted by His Excellency Governor Adegbo Igawitola, has concluded the compilation of a comprehensive handover report to facilitate a smooth transition of the incoming administration. Consequently, kindly find as attached a copy of the report for your information and for that necessary action. Okay. Please but, accept the. You know, but, so but, but, we prepared. But, 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 we, there were two documents that were prepared. Okay. One was on the finances, which was, I think, about 10 or 11 pages. Then the other one was the general one, which is about, so, so, about over 200 and something pages. So, so the, the answer so to Alaji uh, Salam's question yeah. is that, yep. Uh, preparation, I mean, uh, handover notes were, were indeed prepared. prepared. Yeah, and uh, we did hand them over. Okay. Um, uh, also, Ola, let me quickly get Ola in before I go on a break. Ola in uh, Abuja. Good morning to you, sir. Hello, good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. And I also greet your guest in the studio. Okay. Good morning, sir. Hello, can I go on? Yes, please continue. Hello. Please, please Hello, go I ahead. Hello? Please continue. Go ahead. We can hear yes, you. Yes. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, it is often said that um, it will cost equity. Must come with clean hands. Can we have your guests in the studio to um, hold up or not to the fact that um, APC was engaged in apparent vote buying? In fact, some APC members were arrested and are still on prosecution for engaging in vote buying on the election day. So it is erroneous for him to come on here and accuse the Philippines of rigging the election, whereas his own party was involved in um, vote buying. So it will come to equity, must come with clear hands. APC has not come with clear hands in claiming that they rightly won that election. Thank you very much, Uncle Yori. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Allah, calling in uh, from Abuja. Um, I'm going to go on a break now, okay. but that's what we shall resume with when you want to comment uh, okay. on this. Please stay with us. We'll be right okay. back to continue the conversation and indeed taking your calls. Okay, welcome back. And um, I'm having this uh, chat with um, the former chief press secretary, a journalist, uh, Mr. Ismail Omipido, former, you know, the chief press secretary to the former as governor of Oshun State, Adigwega uh, Iziaka Oye Tola. And um, just before we went on break, a call came in from Abuja, as one did indeed from France. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, but the call from Abuja was by Ola, and um, he said that you come to equity, you got to come with clean hands. And as far as he is concerned, considering that it is out there that um, there are a couple of um, supposedly APC uh, members, uh, you know, that are being you know, prosecuted is the word uh, for, you know, uh, elect, uh, election malpractices. Uh, what would you want to say about no, that? It, it was specific. It said vote, vote buying. Uh, well, ah, it's, an, it's a malpractice, <laughs> but vote buying. No, it was specific. Thank okay. God, from the analysis I had given so far, mm -hmm. I didn't mention the issue of vote buying. Uh, I think what uh, Ola is trying to tell me is that if I'm saying that um, they were voting in 749 polling units, APC also bought votes in some areas. That's the point he's trying to make. But the point is this. After the Oshun election, we all saw the reports. Just like we saw those of other states. I am not sure issue of vote buying dominated the media the way it did in other elections. So where is getting this information from? I do not know. No, but... Uh, but, 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 but hold on, excuse okay, me. Let me. Let me let you, because... Hold on. But since... since um, some persons were said to have been arrested and they have been prosecuted. Why don't we wait? Okay. You, you, know, okay. Like, you, you are accepting that there are indeed such no, people being investigated as we speak, some persons according have been, to news reports. Yeah, some, some persons have been prosecuted. Mm -hmm. 
you know. They, they, and, some, they, they allegedly APC members. Well, that is what they say, but like I am saying now, that let's allow wait. the, let's the wait prosecution so that we'll see. Because to you run know, its course. Yeah, because you see sometimes the way the thing is done is funny. For example, uh, when I was going to my polling unit in Ila, which by the grace of God, I eventually won, I had some money with me. Now, if I, I am unfortunate to have been arrested by anybody, I'm sure they will say that I, was, I wanted to use the money for good buying. And the money I had with me was to entertain people around my unit and also uh, take care of the guests that will come and visit me at home after the election. You know, so why not preempting the outcome of the judicial process? Let's wait, and by then we'll be sure of what actually happened as far as uh, the case is concerned. Okay. But that will not in any way negate the fact that we're able to establish that they were overvoting mm -hmm. in 749 polling units. Okay, so you, you, you're you doubling down on that. Yeah. You're yeah. saying that that is the case. Uh, well, I uh, hope that uh, Ola, you know, can work with uh, that particular answer. Sulaiman is on the line from Iliogbo in Oshun State. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good, mor good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Uh, hello, good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning. Yeah, this is Lyman from Ilobu, not Ilobu. Ilobu. Oh, Ilobu. 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 Indeed. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get your guest, uh, Mr. Ismailit, uh, uh, the head oh, to former governor of uh, our state. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Now, yeah, yeah. I could only, if my my memory did not fail me, I could remember that they used BIFA for a show election. So your guest claim that there is over 14, right? So I would like to know that, okay, when there was over 14, was BIFA not used, right? So because they made all your answer that BIFA will correct all mm -hmm. these anomalies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would like to ask your guest is that, uh, he made mention that when they came on board, nobody gave them a chance. But you forgot that the former governor of Itola was chief of staff of Aregbe. So it's the same party, the same government. And the, there is a continuity in government. So nobody, there is nobody gave them a chance. Is this a continuity of APC government? Indeed. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your calling in, uh, Sulaiman. Uh, uh, the, the only thing Sulaiman failed to acknowledge is the fact that um, the road leading to Ilobu, which was awarded by the federal government for several years, which they couldn't complete, we were able to fix it. We started it before the election. And in spite of the outcome of the election, we went ahead to complete that road. We just inaugurated that road uh, recently. It was uh, former governor of Ikiti, uh, Dr. Kao Defiemi, that came you know, to inaugurate that road. I, I felt he should have uh, acknowledged that and given us uh, kudos for that, because that road was influenced by the former deputy speaker, who is from Ilobu. And for the period he spent as deputy speaker of the National Assembly, they couldn't control, the federal government could not complete the road. We were the ones who completed the road just recently. Now, I haven't said that. Yes, it is true that bivas were used. Uh, and yes, that is the why we are, point. Yeah. But and that is are, why we are insisting. If, if you are claiming over voting. It was from the bivas report mm -hmm. that we saw cases of over voting. For example, ask those who covered the election in Oshun, the Anek Vin Potter, when we were doing it, at some point, when people started raising eyebrow as regards the fact that number of accredited voters were at variance with uh, number of votes being declared, at some point they stopped showing number of accredited voters on the INEC uh, uh, result uh, viewing portal. And if you go and read the Yaga report, one of those who observed the election, they said it very clearly that number that in some places number of votes declared were at variance with number of accredited voters. So these are the things we are challenging, and we are challenging them so that it will help INEC to prepare very well for 2023 elections. Okay, let me bring in Fidel, uh, calling in from Oweri. Good morning to you, sir. Hello. Good morning, Fidel. Good morning, Fidel. Hello. Fidel, hello. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, okay. I can hear you. Do I go ahead? Please go ahead. 
Hello? Please do go yes, ahead. So, uh, my name is Chief Fidel Onyene and I'm calling from Owere. I know we are playing politics, but I expect those in government to know that government is a continuum. And all the people you are leading, for instance, when you go and nullify appointments uh, that were held and so on, these are people from Oshu State. The essence of governance is to ensure that people are employed in different places. I want to suggest that Oshu governors should take it easy, set up appropriate committees to review certain things he felt the last government did very wrongly. And not a station where there will be a blanket order to either sack people, condemn people, cancel certain things. All these things are not the best for the development of this place because these are Osho people and they, they are not going to bring outsiders to take their position. But let the corrected be done to total review, setting up panels and so on, and making sure that the right people are put in the right places. Thank you and God bless you. I'm Fidel Yeneke. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yeneke, for uh, calling in. Um, the other thing, you know, Governor Adeleke's first steps, a number of them, the other one is freezing the entire accounts of uh, uh, bank accounts of uh, the government, which was also announced. I don't know w what you have to say about that because we, we did hear that it was the new administration had frozen all the accounts. That suggests to me that um, maybe they have their, uh, what word should I use now? Apprehensions, shall we say? Well, uh, I wouldn't know uh, what led them into taking that decision, but uh, our books are very open. And I think they also included was stopping uh, all commitments, you know, uh, you know. Well, there was. That especially those that they felt were rushed in well, the, you know, uh, well, dying I, days. Well, I am not sure there was anything we rushed. Anything we, we, whatever we did, we had planned them. For example, that road I spoke to you about, the Lubu Road, we flagged off the construction of that road, uh, I think, uh, in April or so. An election was in July. Now, even after the outcome of the election in July, we didn't say because of the way the election turned out, we abandoned that project. We went ahead to complete the project. And today, our people around that axis are happier for it. Uh, Nigerians who travel from north mm -hmm. will have opportunity of applying the same road. Okay. Now, from January 1st, 2022, my principal made it very, very clear when he was felicitating the people of the state that, yes, uh, the year 2022 is an election year in Oshun, but that as a responsive and responsible government, we will not allow politics to take shine of governance. And we indeed worked our talk because until the last day, we were working. So whether so, the accounts were so, frozen, so, so when they are reopened, so when they investigate them, you guys, you know, you're we're feeling... Good. We're, you're good. Good. You're good. We're, we're good. You're good. Uh, we're, me, we're good. We're uh, good. Benga in Abuja, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Amipidon. Good morning, Mr. Iori. Good morning. Good Thank morning, you for calling. Uh, it's a long time we saw Mr. Amipidon on TVC. The this time around, not on journalist angles, <laughs> just to come and... Tell us about what happened in Oshun. You are welcome, Mr. Mikudon. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Mikudon, when your principal was in the seat, he said he was stepping aside. Is he stepping aside to come back in the next four years or in the next 18 to 20 months? If in the next 18 to 20 months, where is he getting that confidence from? Because he that alleges has the burden of proof. And you know it's a marathon. This thing will go to the Supreme Court. So he has to guard his iron class evidence to remove a governor that has labored for, I mean, last, uh, the last one, he narrowed the ministry, now that he got it. He will not want to leave it. So people should prepare for that marathon. Oh. Also, so the, and I wish him well. Anyway, oh. but to the governor, I want to say that he's not, he's not starting on the right footing. Because the civil servant, the civil service is the, is, is the hub of the, of, of the operation. They are the, they, they are the bathroom that do the work. If at this stage he's sacking civil servants, I'm saying that they stay for 30 years and, done, and are now they have done a, that the vacancy, they have done interviews, they have done exam, and they are promoted or appointed, whatever way, you sack them. I don't think it's good for him. Oh. If I were him, I would labor to make sure that 
in the next coming election, the PDP has the largest number of, of uh, House of House members. It's not working for that. It's certain people. Because if the next election, it works against him that P, uh, APC has the largest number. He may not have a, a, a smooth state in the next four years if he's in there. So I wish you to think twice before he, he does anything. It will focus on making sure that PDP has the largest number in the House in the coming election. That should be the goal, not the certain people now. Thank you. Thank you indeed very much for calling in. Um, really, I, I don't think let, we need to say very much about no, that. No, let, let, he, he was talking about he who alleges must prove, yeah, and you yeah. spent a lot of time at the top of the program explaining, explaining all of this. Why I said that, you know, thank time you, is precious. And I, I, I thank Benga for his compliment. And uh, we are aware that it's a marathon race, but uh, thankfully, by the new Electoral Act, uh, there's a timeline time line within which the processes up to Supreme Court would have been over. Okay. So it's not uh, uh, the type where you wait for four, five, five years before you finish uh, the case. So we are very hopeful that uh, in no distant time, uh, the judiciary will dispense uh, of the case. And uh, by the grace of God, we are hopeful that we will carry the day. Okay. Uh, just as you are saying that, I imagine the other side will also be saying that uh, <laughs> no, by the grace of God, they know that they are here to stay. It is natural. Okay. Um, really, um, you know, we, we can't go too deep into it, but we just wanted to talk about the, you know, Governor Adeleke's uh, first steps. And um, yeah, we're beginning to hear, like, uh, you know, the critique uh, that... Uh, uh, all I just did, that, look, when you look at some things, you can't really understand it. The civil servants are who they are. Governments revolve around them. Uh, when, when there is no politically elected uh, governor uh, person, it is those people that keep the state or whatever uh, afloat until a uh, constitutionally you know, elected person uh, takes over. So this whole business about um, some permanent sec secretaries running foul of the new administration even that is probably going to lead to litigation. Uh, that is going to lead to litigation, as uh, Benga was saying from Abuja. I mean, guys have served, to have earned, have, uh, be, have written their examinations, and you know. So, in the words of uh, Benga, he didn't feel that uh, that was the right step. A lot of people have also made that particular point that the civil service is mostly untouchable for politicians. There are rules, guidelines, the constitutional provisions and all of that, right? Yeah, um, you see, uh, one thing about uh, that uh, aspect of the issue is that, you know, when we came in, uh, there were a lot of issues as far as the civil service was concerned. As a matter of fact, uh, the perception out there before we came in was that uh, progressive government are anti-workers, anti-people. And so we set that from the one to change that narrative. We said that from the one, to change that perception. And we succeeded because virtually everything the civil servants, the civil service wanted to make sure they were efficient were being granted them. For instance, they talked about um, promotion that they got before we came in, but had no financial backing. They talked about persons who had stayed on the position for a long time before we came in. You know, all those were granted. In fact, on May 1st, again before the election, they came up with seven demands, part of which was that they wanted abolition of uh, coordinating directors. Before the appointment of permanent secretaries, what we had in Oshun was coordinating directors. So in May, the labor movement came up with those demands, about seven of them, and Mr. Governor granted all the seven. And by the Monday following the May Day, we started the implementation of some of those things, issue of promotion, to the extent that even a day to the election, about a day or two days to the election, some civil servants were still doing their promotion exams to show that we meant what we said. So the appointment of those palm sex was again a fulfillment of the promise we made. Because if we didn't do it, for instance, I know some persons who will take us up, that we pride ourselves of fulfilling our promises, that we pride ourselves of not saying what we cannot do. How come we didn't do this? And so it's on record that we were able to do virtually everything we promised we were going to do. And in the history of Oshun, cost check, Oyetola's administration will be the first administration so far 
where for four years there was no civil unrest, either from workers or students, because their bursary were paid. Um, it is under Oyotola that we never had any kind of strike, even for one minute. You know, so for us, it's a clean record. Okay, and that's probably why your principal was surprised at the outcome and has indicated to us yeah, you know, that so, so some of, some of, he is optimistic yeah, of regaining Yeah, his because seat. You, know, you know some of the civil servants fell to the lies of the PDP. You know, under Eric Beshola, there was this uh, half salary that were owed civil servants. Uh, there was backlog of pensions, which we paid from anyway. We started you, you, paying. Okay. No, we didn't clear. You didn't clear it all. There was no way we could have cleared. But you, you we did paid take a stab at it. Yeah, yeah. With substantial, you know, so the PDP now told them that within six months of their coming into office, they will clear the backlog of those pensions, and they also clear the half salary. So the workers came to us and said, look, this is what these people have promised you. Mm -hmm. Pers personally, I engage with them that I should tell my principal that even if we are not going to do it, that we should just say it. I said, no. I said, my principal will not it say such a like thing. He, does, he, he doesn't believe in lying. Mm. He doesn't believe in mm. lying. So you, fact, what, my, what you're probably saying is that you're waiting to see how the uh, incoming administration we're waiting to is, see. is going to we're pull, waiting pull it to off. See. As we speak, workers in Oshun have not collected their November salary. And I need to place on record that my principal signed off on the salaries on the 23rd of November. So that they have not been paid is not because we refuse to pay. But those who were in charge of executing, uh, it. executing it, apparently taking instructions from the man who had not been sworn in, connived to ensure that workers didn't get their salary. Okay, let me just end on this last one. I don't know how big it is, but um, the state of Oshun has now become Oshun State, <laughs> like everybody else. You know, it's, it's Lagos State, Ogun State. It is no more the state of Oshun. Uh, that has been reversed. Any particular comments on that? Well, it wasn't my principal who changed the name. No, he was. Well, he was chief of staff at the time. Uh, look, Uncle Yori, thank God we are both in the media industry. Uh, a line editor is not the same thing as the editor. <laughs> 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 the editor is not the same thing as the CEO. Yes. The box stops at the doorstep of the CEO. And so you cannot now hold the editor responsible for a decision that was taken by the CEO. We well, must get this thing well, very clear. So, so in any case, so, in any case, so, if you look at the style of my principal administration in the last four years, you will know that it's significantly different from what was witnessed under Eric Beshoa in eight years. Okay. So that shows that there's a difference. Okay. But but that was left alone, maybe for you know. No, there were some legal there important. was some legal encumbrances okay. around that. Uh, there was a court case that was instituted, and you know, my principal always follow due process. In any case, the single uniform that we reviewed, it was instituted by Eric Beshola. But because before we came in, it was a major issue, it even became a campaign issue. And we promised that we we're going to look at it. And once we came in, there was um, a thank you tour, there was a DFID uh, citizen needs assessment. This issue came up. And so we had no choice but to sit down and look at it. And when the review committee turned in their report, they recommended that we should go back to uh, 6334 because before then we were not doing 6334, that we should reintroduce the early child education, that we should change, uh, we should go back to the old school system, that we should go back to the old uniform. And that old uniform really helped to revive the economy of the state because those old women and men selling school uniforms, uh, doing tailor, we're back to business. Okay, well, um, so you don't have a comment one way or the other on the matter of the, the name of the state, but Governor Adilike now says that uh, it shall become like every other state. Uh, it shall have state after its name as opposed to any other device. Okay, but I want to thank you very much, uh, you know, uh, Ismail Omikbidon, uh, for coming on, journalist and immediate past uh, chief press secretary to the Ocean State Governor uh, who, you know, has said that you can refer to me now as the previous governor, but he's optimistic of coming back into that seat By and continuing support. his work. By the grace of God. Thank you very much. Uh, the pleasure is mine. God bless okay. you. So that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.